Today we're talking about the Samsung Frame TV, specifically the 2023 Frame TV. Now you guys know the Frame TV is meant to be a different type of television set. Yes, you can watch TV on there, but it brings in art and of course customization that you can't find on any other TV set. It's no longer just this big black square that you put on the wall or you know you have on a, on a stand. What's different about the Frame TV, of course, is the fact that you can customize and have your own artwork. And I was really excited about this because I got to upgrade my old Frame TV with the 2023 version. Now, I had the 2019 version, and the first thing I noticed is just the 2023 version is thinner. Um, it's about less than half an inch thick, while the 2019 version uh, it was about a, an inch and a half thick. So much thinner, which meant it just laid flush. It was much easier, um, you know, just to see how flush and nice it is around, like, you know, my fixture location. Now, in terms of mounting the TV, I didn't do it. I got some professionals, and if you need help, you should do that too. It also has an anti-reflective um, mat display. And this was a huge thing for me. The reason I like this is because my 2019 version, I have Philips Hue bulbs right at, uh, above me here. And anytime I watch TV, I could see it on the screen, especially when there was a darker scene, right? You could see it just show up. And that is not the case. 2023 version, it does not show up. For me, that was great. It was, it was just fantastic to actually see that. Plus, um, it also helps with your artworks as well. They move much more lifelike or realistic whatever time of day you have your artwork up but it's daytime at night it just really helps and it looks good and i thought the matte display would be terrible watching content but no none at all now this is a q uh, a qled 4k tv uh samsung says 100 percent color volume um yes it's a 4k tv very great picture looks really nice um you know, especially when you compare it to other other Samsung TVs. Call of volume though, so I don't think it's a hundred percent. Especially when you move off the angles, especially either left or right, you're gonna see some of those colors kind of fade away. Uh, but again, this TV is not really focused on that. Even though they say, I really don't look at it that way. This is focused on bringing those artworks to a lifelike feel, and it does a fantastic job. Always has. And I think it's really improved. And that matte finish really does a good job here. Now, um, as you know, because it's mounted on the wall, you have a one connector box. Now, the box itself allows you to connect your uh, port separately and you have everything looking nice and clean. The box is still the same from my 2019 version. Uh, you do have one um, HDMI 2.1 port, which is a bummer. Um, and, but it's not focused on gaming, although there is a gaming hub. Yes, there is. Um, and that gaming hub allows you to do so much more and it's, it's quite impressive, right? But before we get to the game hub, let's take a look at the new remotes. This is now the standard remote Samsung has for all their TVs because you can recharge your USB type C and it's got solar charging as well as also charging through radio waves. Yes, radio waves. I really like this remote uh, because it's it's just sensible, more conscious. Plus, it's a very simplistic remote with, of course, your media buttons with Netflix, Samsung TV Plus, Prime Video, and Disney Plus, HBO Max. Trying to get on here. Anyway, um, that allows you to go into the new OS, which I am not the biggest fan of. And the OS has some uh some new sections you have hubs now so with this tv this is the only samsung tv that has three hubs because you have an art hub for all your artwork where they're all housed and where you can go into the subscriptions and things like that you also have a media hub where all your apps are housed as well and you can access samsung tv plus you can access your different streaming app that you like from netflix to hbo max to hulu all that fun stuff on there uh, but for me what was really good to see was there is a gaming hub now this is where all your um, streaming services will show up and also if you have consoles connected in this case you only be connecting one console because it supports HDMI 2.1 with this one port but because it has a gaming hub it means it has Xbox Game Pass and Stadia now I went ahead connected my Xbox controller and I started playing games on this TV and I gotta tell you though 
games looked really good and in different angles different spots moving around they just look sharp and vibrant it was quite impressive and i think that matte display really goes along with whether it was lower light settings or also it was just really bright it looked good so playing forza horizon 5 that looked sharp with all those vivid colors coming out um and also playing you know uh, the new teenage mutant ninja turtles uh shredder's revenge that looked good as well and as well Nina, Samba, some halo infinite so the gaming perspective really came out well uh especially since i'm streaming and i like this option for this tv i'm actually okay with it because i this is not a this is not a tv that's meant to be gaming you know, as a hardcore game or really serious. So I, I'm cool with it that I can always jump whenever I want and play some some games I want to do quite quickly. Now, the other thing about this TV, of course, is just what the picture quality looks like. And that's also pretty good, you know? Um, now, you some of you will go, okay, you've been saying pretty good and looks nice on all this stuff, all these adjectives left to right, right? How does it compare to, say, the Samsung S95D? Well, the S95B is a different category, and I think that's Samsung's best TV, and that really shows. Now, this is a very solid TV set in terms of the picture quality, that you will enjoy what you're watching. You've got different picture modes, like filmmaker mode. Uh, you've got a gaming mode, whatever I'm gaming, it switches to that. So those things are there. Now, there's also the intelligent mode that allows you to, uh, that does everything for you automatically. Uh, so that you don't have to switch modes, uh, but the TV understands what you're watching and will switch the modes to that. In terms of audio, audio is decent. You can take a listen. I have the brand new Pixel Buds Pro. This is the coral color. And today we're going to see how it stacks up and compares to, yeah, it's decent, but honestly, I think everybody else will be using the soundbar with this TV because that's not the main focus. The main focus has always been artwork and display your artworks, and it does a really good job at doing that. And I think if you're looking for something to be a centerpiece of your house, or you want to actually have um, some artworks, but want to also access your TV as well, this works well. Now, the other thing too that I really liked when setting up the TV is you've got a couple of options for your voice assistants. You've got uh, Lady A, Alexa. you've got uh, Google, and you've got Bixby. So you can pick and choose whichever you want. You want. And then the other thing too is when you're setting up the TV, you can go ahead and sign in with your mobile device and sign into your various apps, or you can scan and sign that in as well. So those things made the setup process much easier and it was great to get in to start watching content and also do the things I wanted to do. Plus, once I signed into my Samsung account, all my previous artworks were moved over uh, to this TV because I can actually go ahead and do that and download it. It's a nice TV. It's really nice. And I think anyone's looking for something like this will definitely enjoy this year's 2023 Samsung Flame TV. 